Hi friends, I'm Tammy Kay. Welcome back to my channel. So today we are painting something new, something different. We're gonna be painting a series of nine birds. That's right. So I'm not sketching this for you, but you can pause the video at any time at the beginning if you'd like to just capture this in a sketch or you can just freehand as well. So the point of this video, which it was very long when I first filmed it and I've added it out some parts so that we can move forward a little bit quicker, but I wanted to tell you the different ways, techniques that I use to make these birds. So if you're not used to doing anything that has a face, this might be something fun to try. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna remind you guys, we're just enjoying the process, trying to experience some good old fashioned self-care. So friends, I have a few reference photos here. I'm just showing you what I'm working off of. You obviously won't see them moving forward in this video. And if you wanna take a quick sketch, here's a good time to pause and grab this if you'd like. But right now, I'm gonna take my kneaded eraser, which is, in my opinion, the best type of eraser in the world because it doesn't leave all the little residue bits and pieces and it doesn't smudge all of your lead from one place to another. So quickly getting rid of those sketch lines. So we have a lighter bit to work with. Got my number six round brush and I'm gonna spray down my paints. Now today I'm using the Winsor Newton Professional tube paints and this is my special little palette. I picked out every single color, took me so long to figure out what I wanted so that I could have some beautiful, vibrant, lovely colors, especially for creating my florals and bright landscapes. So I'm going to start by doing this with light color and I'm just going to take some nice, first of all, concentrated kind of that cadmium yellow, it's a little orangey. And I'm putting that in, now I'm taking the clean damp brush and I'm just spreading out that color. So I'm getting a nice, fairly light wash of color for that base color. I'm saying color a lot. Anyway, I'm making sure to keep the white of the eye available and not painting that in, getting the little tail as well. So for this series of five birdies here, I'm doing this similar style for that first wash and I just wanted to add in my little yellows first and then we'll start adding in some other colors for these birds. So I do want to do some texture and make sure that we're getting some of those feathers starting to show through, but we have to start off with the first color. And now guys, this is not something to worry about and to stress about. So I want you guys, as I'm adding in different colors here and letting them just kind of blend together on my paper, I'm just being very aware that this is not a stressful point. You can put a nice light wash here, whatever color you want, and you're going to go over it. And some of it will show through, but a lot of it will be covered by your second layer. So first of all, starting off with this guy here with a nice smooth color, I did want to make sure that the tail right here is a bit darker than the top part because I wanted to differentiate between those two pieces as I saw in the reference photo of this bird. So that's the first one where we did a smooth base layer for this guy, a bit darker than the top birds. But with this one here, I want to start doing those little sketchy lines, leaving some white space. And that is going to start emulating the feathers that I want to portray with this particular guy. So when you are doing texture on a bird, you know, there's many different ways to do these procedures. Right now I'm starting with a nice yellowy green and these small little brush strokes. And I'm not trying to copy my photo, but rather I'm just trying to emulate some of those basic shapes that I'm seeing there. So because of that, I'm starting with some longer brush strokes here. The feathers are longer and wider on his chest and I'm keeping with a similar color there. But now with the wing, I've switched over to more of a bluish green and we're just adding those larger brush strokes, keeping some white space so we can see you know, between each feather. But this is a very loose bird and very loose rendition of how he looks in real life. Just giving you guys some options of what you can do to vary it up. So now I'm grabbing some pretty thick blue and I'm doing the same thing over here on his belly, some of those longer brush strokes too for a little bit of feathering and you can really just have a lot of fun with it, especially with these tropical birds. Now I've got a nice green gold is actually what the color is here. And I'm adding that over the top just for some more definition. So with the tropical birds, you can do the rainbow colors. You can kind of just do whatever you want. We'll go ahead and put another coat over some of that when it's dry. 
and you can really just do every color of the rainbow if you wanted to. Really the point is just to have fun and that's what I'm hoping to show you today. I'm adding in a blue tail as well and we're just keeping this really fun and loose and exciting. All right, so now we're going to start with my favorite little birds, rosy-cheeked lovebirds. And we've got this one here that's hunched down a little bit. And she has a bright, rosy, kind of orangey-red color So for her head. So we're just going to put that in. And I'm, unlike the birds above, I'm using a very rich, vibrant color here. We may or may not do a second layer on this part, but we'll see. So it's a very smooth head. It doesn't have a lot of those little brush strokes just to emulate feathers. So I'm just coming around and smoothing that out without dipping into my water yet. And now I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of water. I always dab my brush in a paper towel just to cut back on the amount of liquid and have a little bit more water control. And now I'm gonna start adding in some yellow. Yellow is that next color and these are absolutely gorgeous rainbowy birds. They've got the red, the yellow, We've got some orangey in there as well, and there's green. They're just absolutely gorgeous all around and super fun to paint. So I'm kind of blending the colors a little bit, but again, leaving a lot of white space in between to emulate those feathers. So unlike the parrot on the left, for these birdies, I'm keeping a little bit less white space here, at least for the second layer, and you'll see that later. So I'm just kind of trying to blend some of those marks in with the previous color and because they're wet of course they're going to blend into each other a little bit create some mixing and that's completely fine there are so many ways that you can paint these birds you can even throw some salt on them for texture and they're going to get some blooms and some fun little shapes that you wouldn't see normally i just added in a little bit of that nice orangey red just to blend that in with the yellow. So now we're gonna do our second little lovebird here and just following that same pattern, leaving the white space. Like I said before, you're gonna see a second layer on this. And so we'll go ahead and blend a little bit more at that point. So now it's time to do a little bit of fancying up for these little tiny birds at the top. And I do apologize. You can barely see what I'm doing here, but I'm just making that nice little yellowy beak for the birds. And then we're gonna get to the details of these little creatures. But of course, before we do that, we're gonna grab some brown and we're just gonna start with adding in kind of some brown and gray for our stick that the birds are perched on. So I'm holding that brush really loose. Again, this whole painting is supposed to be pretty loose despite the fact that there is a pencil sketch. Now, if you don't do this with a sketch and you just do it freehand, it's definitely gonna come out looking more loose, but I do like to have the lines there so that I know where the paint is supposed to go. It gives you a sense of confidence and everything is placed there. So there's not a lot of guesswork, just enjoying choosing the textures you're gonna put on, choosing the colors. So we're gonna do this with the bottom one as well, which is a bit thicker and splits off at the end here. I did drop in some color, some navy into the brown and you can blend that and swirl it around or just leave it how it is. So now I'm grabbing some navy to add in our beaks for the parrots and just putting that in kind of that medium, medium value. So not terribly dark. When it dries, it's gonna be one shade lighter than what you see here. And it's also not terribly light. We'll only need to do one layer and that'll be good. So for the lovebirds, I'm deciding to do a nice red beak. I mean, that's really the type of beak they have. It's gonna match somewhat with their head, but I'm just going really dark, this reddish orange color, and just putting on as thick as I can. It's more like that cream consistency where you can still spread it, but it's also not so dry that you're getting that dry brush effect. All right, so now for the details for the little birds. And I love this because you already have that base layer. I'm not really wanting white space for these birds in between the feathers. And so we're just going to create those little lines. Now the tail feathers are really long and thin, so I like to emulate that. And then of course the wing has the feathers there as well. Now for the rest of the bird, what I'm gonna do is just put on 
a little bit more saturated color than that's already there and it's not going to be terribly detailed at all so i'm starting off with kind of that mid-tone color and then i can take my brush dip it dab it and just spread it all out nice and thin a little bit around the face as well of course leaving that white space for the eye which we're going to use a dark color we're going to use black anyway so if you painted over it it would be no big deal but i just like to reserve that space you know just for whatever so i've got a nice reddish color pretty light and i'm going to do that same thing i'm going to start spreading out the paint and again i love to dab my brush and it just gets rid of some of that liquid after kind of cleaning off my brush i'd like to have semi-clean water clearly my water is not clear but it's going to be fine and work for the spreading that we're trying to do here so i'm adding in now my third little birdie here spreading in that color and we have blue and we have orange now i'm doing some pretty visible brush strokes here that i'm going to keep there i'm just trying to do like a little bit of a sketchiness to create some of those feathers a contrast from like that first little bird now be careful when you blend these colors because blue and orange blend together to create a muted color or a brown if there's equal parts so you just want to be careful when you paint around it and it's okay if they blend together it's not going to be a bad thing all right so now i'm going ahead and doing a smooth head for my blue parrot here now i'm mixing in some brush strokes of a nice dark navy and there's some dark feathers here. I'm doing a dry brush, meaning a lot of pretty thick paint and not a lot of water. So we're getting this really cool texture. There's a lot of curved little feathers on these birds, at least from what I'm seeing in the photo. And I'm just trying to emulate that. I'm keeping that a certain darkness here versus the tail so that we can differentiate between where the wings are and where the tail is. And so I'm just adding in some of that medium blue, adding in the navy, and then just clean damp brush to blend some of that out, blend it in, however you'd like to say it. I really like having the brush strokes instead of the smooth bird because it really gives you that idea of all those feathers that these birds have. And it can be challenging to do. So you can see within all of these birds, there's differences in how I like to add that texture. Here with the lovebirds, of course, I'm just keeping those fairly vertical brush strokes. They're pretty thin and vertical, curve in a little bit around the body sometimes. And I'm just allowing them to blend into each other, the different colors as they want to, because that's what watercolor does. It blends and it moves and it kind of does what it wants. So we're gonna darken up the wing here on the parrot, a little bit more saturated color, just some smaller marks than I had before, still leaving some of that white space. And you can really see because the difference is in the green that this is the wing. You can see where the wing stops and the, where the body begins. And this is a whole bunch of you know information about edges. Like we talk about where does one edge stop and the next one begin and two objects so that you can differentiate between one and the other. Just like we're talking about the wing and the body and the tail and the head and all those things. All right, so darkening up some of those brush strokes with a more concentrated color, and that's really what I use. Less water, a little bit more pigment, and you're gonna have that saturated color and even some dry brushing from time to time, which I think is a great way uh, to add in your lovely texture. All right, so now I'm taking a Micron pen, or this is actually probably it's like a Micron, but a different brand. It was definitely cheaper. Anyway, waterproof. So if you did paint over the top, it would not bleed and spread. It's a great tool to have if you want to draw first and then paint and have nice dark lines. This is a pretty thick tip on this little marker. And I'm just going to put in the eyes. For drawing the eyes in, I like to do these little circles outward to inward and making sure to try to leave a little tiny white space for a highlight because that's what's going to give you a more natural looking eye and if you do use up all of the white space that's totally fine because you can just take a little gel pen or a little dot of white paint add a little highlight and it's just going to make your eye definitely look a lot more real so now we are going to draw in the little feet sometimes the legs are showing sometimes the bird is perched and just squatted down so much that you're just seeing the little 
the little feet. And I think these are adorable. These little birdies are just pretty simple. They have less uh, detail or less, you know, thought put into it or less, you know, work, I would say, versus the birds on the bottom that have a bit more of that detail and texture. So just trying to figure out what is your style, which ones you like better, and feel free to leave me in comments some feedback on which one was your favorite. And also like the video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I do have a Patreon as well for bonus content and all the fun things, exclusive tutorials, live stream, and other things. So check that out if you wanna become a member, linked in the description as well. Just blending out some color here and then adding in my eyes, making sure to leave, of course, that little highlight. And now the last thing to do is to put in a little bit of splatter. So you just take some really watery paint and you tap your brush around and you sprinkle it wherever it makes sense. I like to put it in the white spaces. And it just creates, instead of putting in a background, some nice magical texture, a little bit of fun artistic touch to the rest of your painting. And now, last but not least, it is time to take off the tape. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I hope that you paint with me again soon. Happy painting. Happy mental health. All right, friends. I hope you enjoyed painting these nine lovely little birdies. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. And if you enjoyed this, if you'd like to see birds in the future or something else, I'm really excited about your feedback. Don't forget my art retreat. You can click the link below to get more information. It's gonna be in Italy. It's gonna be this fall and it's gonna be great. I'm also on Skillshare. You can see the couple of courses that I've published so far. 30 days free if you're a new student. Take care guys. I will see you in the next tutorial.